This is music and this is a classic. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Tape Worm Terror. In this episode, we're going to have a look at this classic Iron Maiden 7th Son of a 7th Son. I picked this one up recently. It's the American pressing. You can see that from the uh, round holes here. The European one has slits instead. So I picked this one up recently, and um, it will make an appearance in a haul video further down the line. But I picked it up because I've actually never had an official cassette tape version of this classic. Back in the day, I had a dub tape version, and then I would buy the CD version, and a bit later, a, a vinyl reissue. But I never had the official cassette tape, so that's why I bought it. Uh, this is a classic. I think this is a masterpiece. The production on this is so crisp. The guitars sound unique. I've never heard a guitar tone like this before or since. The songs are well composed. The bass sounds awesome. Bruce Dickinson, uh, his performance is perfect. The drums are just clockwork precise. It's a masterpiece of an album, I think. Um, so I never had it uh, on an official cassette tape, so that's why I bought it. And just so I could have the experience of popping this into the cassette player and listen to it. So I was really looking forward to doing that. Uh, I brought it with me to my office at work. I have a cassette player there, popped it in, rewound it, and it snapped. The tape snapped. So I figured, okay, I guess, I guess I have to repair it. And I haven't repaired a cassette tape uh, since probably the late 80s, maybe early 90s. And I, I was lucky enough never to have a tape snap on me before. So I never had to actually go in and uh, splice together the tape. Uh, the repairs I would do would not more be, you know, uh, when the uh, uh, magnetic tape gets entangled in the um, cassette uh, player mechanisms, and you, I would have to you know, pull them out and disentangle the cassette tape, things like that. Never had, fortunately, to splice together um, uh, tape before. But some of my friends back in the day had that experience and they just used scotch tape to put it back together. Uh, I figured I, I don't want to use scotch tape because I'm not sure how, you know, will that hold? Uh, so what I did was I bought this splicing tape and I also picked up this uh, tape splicing block and went to town. And uh, so basically the, the shell here was actually in pretty good condition. As you can see, it's in very good condition, but it had, uh, let's see if I can find it right here. It did have a crack. I don't know if you can see it right there. It had a crack in the shell. So I had to be very careful not to make things worse. So what I did was, and as you can see, perhaps this is not one of those shells that are screwed together. This one is glued together. So I had to pry apart the two components of the shell, uh, but I couldn't use brute force. I couldn't screw it apart. So I used a precision knife to just scrape, right? Scrape at, uh, you know, the seams here where they're glued together. Just scrape it, scrape it until I cut through the glue. And when I had done that here and here and here, I could pry very gently. I could pry the two shells apart. Um, and when they were apart, you know, I could go in and, and, and uh, inspect the damage. And fortunately, what had happened was, I think this is called the head tape or lead tape, the non-magnetic uh, tape that is just attached to the spools here. Uh, and then the magnetic tape, which is typically brown, you can see it right here, um, is 
kind of glued with an adhesive to the lead tape or head tape. And what had happened was simply that that uh, adhesive had just failed. It's basically just failed. That does happen. This is from 88. So uh, what I did was, like I said, I, I um, disassembled this and I put the uh, magnetic tape uh, from basically from this spool and then the lead tape from this spool, uh, put it in here, made a diagonal incision. I don't know if you can see it. There's kind of like a guide here, a diagonal incision. Because I had to, I couldn't just like tape them back together because there was still like residue of the adhesive. So I had to remove that part um, of both the magnetic tape and the lead tape. And they say that if you do it like a diagonal cut, um, you reduce the noise it'll make um, when you play the tape after you fixed it. So, so that's what I did. I did that, taped it together. And then, and that was the most difficult part, it was reassembling it because there are these kind of, of bars or teeth or whatever on here. And obviously you have to make sure that the tape is behind them. Basically it's imprisoned behind bars. You also have to make sure that it's uh, wound around these. You got these mini spools here. It has to be on the outside of those as well. So uh, there's a whole lot of stuff that that um, you kind of have to time. And also, I just I wanted to make sure that I had actually fixed it. So first, I used some scotch tape just to tape the shell together, and I put it in my cassette thick and just rewound it, played it a little bit, rewound it, played it a, a couple of times just to check it, and it sounded uh, like it was fixed. It didn't uh, break or anything. So I had to glue it back together and that was a bit of a challenge, but I succeeded and uh, I didn't glue it all together like everywhere. So just in case it snaps again, hopefully it, I can go in and fix it. So just glued it, you know, where you got these uh, kind of, of uh, pegs and stuff that snap together to fix uh, or to keep it uh, all in place. So just glued those. I did fix it. It sounds great. I played it yesterday. And, you know, if you're a tough guy, you're a tough guy. I'm not a tough guy. So it was a very emotional experience listening to this. There were places, you know, although I, I listen to this very often, but just listening to it on a cassette tape, you know, you have Adrian Smith's guitar solos. Um, I was moved to almost to tears many times listening to this certain vocal lines some of dave murray's guitar solos uh, some of the bass lines just all the stuff it just you know brought back all the good memories from back in the day so it was a very emotional experience maybe even more emotional as well because uh, i had to fix it i couldn't just listen to it straight away there was a waiting game kind of going on but it's a great fantastic album Happy to have it on cassette tape here. Happy that it's fixed as well. Uh, it's not completely fixed because the case here is is also broken. There, there's a peg on here that kind of uh, you can insert it into a kind of a hole here and that holds everything together. But the peg has fallen off here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give this J card a new home in this replacement uh, case. I bought like what, 25 of them uh, from a German uh, seller. I think it's called Protected. So getting rid of this one here. I know it's the original part. Maybe it'll lower the value. I don't care now. Well, let's just have a look at the J card first, actually. So um, fold it out. Looks like this. You have the alternative uh, artwork right there. It's awesome. Um, I mean, I know this. This is iconic, but sometimes I wish they had used this as the artwork. Uh, but it would be wrong. So of course, this, like I said, this is iconic. This is the way to go. But I do remember it as a as a kid. I saw um, in a shop in in a shopping mall called Rosengård Center in Odense. 
they had a shoulder patch with this and I was very intrigued it looked very mysterious but yeah awesome looking uh, J card and a pretty thick stock of paper you have the actual artwork here you have a bad photo here um, they look almost like 90s so they're a bit ahead of the, the curve there you got the uh, a line up like I said you have this alternative artwork uh, you have the track list and all of these songs on here to my ears are classics very melodic as well um, and then on the inside you have the lyrics with some cool uh, kind of mystical uh, drawings in between so uh, fantastic um, package so yeah this one is going to get a new home there you go in this new case i have some other cassettes where the uh, shells are busted so i have to give them a new home too but there you go voila seventh son of a seventh son fixed it works now in a new uh, case too good stuff if you for some reason and there could be lots of different reasons i mean it's an older release if you haven't heard this yet and you like like old school heavy metal like if you're into the new um, new wave of traditional heavy metal if you want to go back and listen to some 80s metal this is a pretty good place to start my favorite Iron Maiden album as a lot of you know is somewhere in time but this one here is a fantastic album too I think I think it's a masterpiece so there you go uh, the tape that snapped on me I had to do some uh, surgery using precision knives uh, super glue, uh, splicing tape, this splicing block. You can do it without this. I just, I just like using this because uh, you kind of you have this, uh, you have this uh, ridge kind of thing here where you can put the tape in and it holds everything down. So uh, yeah, definitely. If I have more tapes that snap on me in the future, now I have a way to repair them. And I did watch a whole bunch of instructional videos on YouTube, and I checked out the, I think it was the WikiHow, um, and I kind of, all the information I got from watching those, I synthesized that together into a method that I thought would suit my purposes. So there you go. Again, great, great, great album. Loved listening to it. And uh, I'm glad it's fixed. So there you go. Thanks for watching.